I'm a little under the weather. All right. Well, I'm a little under the weather. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm a little under the weather today. Been having a rough couple days here with some cold symptoms, but we've got some stuff here. We've got a load of wood and all kinds of supplies that we've been gathering for our future aviary that we want to get started on. Let's get this loaded up. Move it over. Show you what our plans are for our aviary. Let's go. Another time, another place. I just know. Mm -hmm. It could have been you. What a crime and what a shame to let go mm -hmm. Sometimes I just don't know what to do It should have been you Alright guys, we are moving the chicken tractor today. First time that we've moved it since they've been in this spot. They've killed all the, the grass down pretty well here. So we need to get them on some new grass. We've got a flat spot over here. So it's getting moved and then I've got some stuff that I just bought from Premier One that I want to install for them. I think they'll make their lives and our lives a little easier. Let's see where the chickens have been. well fertilized area and they really did a good number on scratching the grass up and put getting it pretty bare right here so if they needed to be moved it was about time all right well we bought a bunch of stuff from P premier one supplies there uh, the people we get our electric fencing from and they didn't sponsor this or, or give any of this to us. We bought it ourselves, but we wanted to show you what we got just because we're gonna hook the chickens up with some pretty cool stuff today. So let's open it up. Oh, wow. Pull those out while I pull the box. All right, this is some poultry netting that we're gonna use for the chickens. It's double spiked, which we liked. It's easier to put in the ground. It's the Premier Pro netting, and so it's a little shorter between posts, where we had been using Posts that were 10 feet between, this is about six feet between. So we're gonna try that out, see if it's a little easier to use. This is some um, shocker knot netting. This is for chicks and meat birds. And this is something we wanted to try out. A lot smaller holes uh, in this, and so you can get chicks out on grass a lot quicker. Uh, let's try this way. You, you hold the box. This is an automatic chicken waterer that we'll be able to hook up to our rain barrels. And this should help keep the ducks out of the water. So that way it'll fill up and they won't be bathing in it and we'll, won't have to refill their water as often. Oh, here's the other part of it, the little valve you can put in there and so it controls the water flow going into this thing. Got ya! Got my side done! Easy! What's this thing? And this will be an automatic feeder. So you have your feed going the top, got a little lid for it. Actually has a little floor platform. I need to set it up here real quick. And the chickens step on it. It opens up somehow to where they can stick their head in there and eat out of this. So it's a way to keep any rodents or raccoons or anything like that from getting into your feed if you have it outside. And we don't have to be home all the time to feed. We can just fill this up with feed, then come and feed from this whenever they want. And it also keeps it out of the rain. And what's this thing? No box. All right, and then we've got another solar charger because we have the chicken separate from all the other birds now. And get solar power, and then it'll connect to the fence and provide a steady shock, keep any predators out and keep the chickens out. All right, so I'm gonna get this new fence set up, then we can get the chickens out for the day, feed them and water them, and then I'll start working on the, the new feeder and water to get that ready for them. Who do we call her? She's Lucy. She's Lucy, our locking daughter. I think this one's pretty because she's in this messing box all the time. Oh yeah, every day. Alright, I've got our automatic water for the chickens all connected together. It only took about a minute. A lot more intimidating than it really is. 
So I'm gonna hook it up to our hose real quick before I move it in with the chickens just to make sure it works all right. All right, I just filled it with a five gallon bucket so I didn't have to waste as much water from this, but let's turn this on. Okay, it's getting full. Let's see if I push it down. Good. Fills up. Now we just need the chickens to test it out. We've got some 20 foot long boards here. These are gonna be for our deck. And so we need to get these laid out here and then we'll start to figure out our aviary size. All right, we've got everything laid out here for our deck. This is gonna be the deck for our aviary coop. And so we've got some two by eights that are 20 feet long. So we can make a 20 by 20 foot deck and some plywood for the flooring. The top of that, but it'll be the coop floor. And right over here is gonna be the coolest part, I think of this aviary coop is some Roughly sawn wood. We went to a sawmill. We found out about this from Cup of Jolene on Instagram where she uh, built her chicken coop out of wood like this and that'll be the outer wall of our coop. I think that'll give it a really nice natural feel and kind of blend in with the, uh, the woods that we're building it around here. So we've sketched out how we want this aviary to sit. It's going to be a decagon. It's going to have 10 sides to this thing but I've got to figure out the exact measurements and then we need to figure out the, the spots for all the posts and then have our coop and then have a pond so that's the next thing we need to map out figure out the exact dimensions and then we'll come back out here and map that out so we can start to lay everything out so these are the baby chicks that we hatched out they're about three weeks old and I think it's about time for them to move out to the bigger brooder they are I've grown their space and it's starting to get skimpy every single day. All right, look how big these guys have grown. All right, so this is Mahomes. He has grown so much. We think he's a boy. Still very early on. Um, sometimes if you see if they have a, well, their tail feathers kind of pointed. They kind of are rounded, so it might be a female. Mahomes might be a girl, but we'll have to see later. All right, this one's Pat. Not much difference between the two of them, just the frozy feet and the tail feather looks any different. And we got Woo. Still got some feathers coming in. This one is a cross between the I Am Chamani Rooster and a Silky Chicken. So he's got little fuzzy feet. He's got the five toes, but he's got the feathering like the I am Shimani. I think we're still gonna have to have some heat on here. It's still pretty cool outside, but at least they've got some space to run around and scratch. Cashew, what's going on? Hey, all right, totally fresh coop for a day. Keep it clean, boys and girls. Hold on, buddy. All right, we're all ready to start planning and laying out where our, I'll just block Becky's face right there. I've been sketching out the aviary, how I want it to, to look. There's a nice house, a little pond we might put a bridge over we may not need to between each post 20 feet wide and i just calculated out uh, we found an app that figures out the sizes and the length and diameter and all the things we need for a decagon and that only came out to about 64 feet across we measured it out when we were out here and it wasn't 
far enough for what we liked. And so we upped each post to 25 feet apart, but we're gonna need to lay it out and then see if it makes sense. This may be really big to work with. We may need some help from some engineering viewers when we're all said and done to make sure that this will all work together and be functional and stable. Let's get it laid out and then we'll show you what we're in store for here. Where's that? This is our middle. So we're using some marking paint. This stuff will come off as soon as it probably either rains or we mow over in this area. We just mowed today to give us lots of space to work, but it'll come off eventually. So we remeasured it. Everything is about 40 feet uh, from the center point um, to each outer corner. And so now we've got all of our spots. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it so we can see how big this thing is all the way around. right here Becky so this is our aviary coop right here these are 20 by 20 foot joists that'll ultimately support a deck and then we'll build a coop on top of that and it's really close to level maybe a foot or two off that we'll have to pull it off the ground and level it out in the next couple days um, but what we're thinking so you'll have a door right here in the middle like here so you got a, a door here if you want to try to get a little deck up here you can have you step up there come in here into a a workroom storage area where we keep all our feed. We can work on plants that we'll put in here for the aviary. And so we'll have a wall just like a barn would have like a horse stall. And we'll have a wall that'll go all the way across, solid wood on the bottom, have some kind of mesh fencing up top. And then we'll have storage and then we'll have some kind of door somewhere in here that you walk through. And then this is the coop area for the peacocks the pheasants and maybe the ducks if they come in here we're not sure if they would stay inside or not they're welcome to and then we'll have some kind of door probably over here on the south side this is the uh, south side here so the roof will have solar up there and then they'll have a, a door where they can come running out but we'll probably leave it open all the time because it'll be completely solid on the outside over here so the last thing we need to figure out becky is where's the pond going so right here would go the center pole so we've got a center pole right here a big pole that's going to go up like 25 30 feet in the air and that'll be right here in the middle and we'll have a lot of different shoots off of it so they'll have branches and things to hang out on when they're until we get some bigger trees in here and then we need a pond somewhere up here just looking at the way the land's tilting we'd have to dig it out quite a bit we dig more where it's higher but i dig would less there like put it right here this is an estimate of the pond they'll come out right there so i don't want to put it too close to them coming out how am I doing on but utilizing our space as best as we can? This is where they can get drink and then where the ducks can hang out and play. You can even come this way a little bit more, but that's probably fine. Can you see it's a bean shape? Kind of a bean shape. Bean shaped expensive. That's from a movie. Anybody know what that movie is? Bean shaped expensive. If you name it in the comments, I'll pin your comment. Oh, last thing over here is our doorway in. The problem we've had with the pheasants is only having one door and trying to find a way to keep them from hopping out. You need room for each door to, say this door opens in. You wait, close that door, and then right here. So that way we've got the double protection to where we can walk into one door, close it, and then walk through the next door, a double door. Nothing can get out. All they could do is get into there if they were right outside. All right, well, let me try to get on top of the vehicle here. Give you guys an overhead look at this thing. All right, so right down here, we've got our full aviary. We've got 10 posts that we're hoping will be 20 to 20 feet in the air. A center post that'll be a little higher, maybe 25 to 30 feet in the air. We'll have our coop in the back, front storage area. We'll have our pond over there on the side. A center post that we can put branches and uh, beams off of uh, one it'll support the net in the middle but then also it will give everything a place to roost during the day they can get as high as they want in here we've got a double door situation over there and then we'll have a ton of trees and plants and all kinds of tropical things in here 
Now what we haven't quite figured out is the amount of solar we'll need for that coop. It's south facing so we can put the solar there. But we're not sure if we're going to need to have a pump or a filter for the pond over there. Uh, we've read about ponds that don't have anything if they just have enough uh, pond plants that they might be able to compensate what the ducks will put into that. So uh, that's something we need to figure out is solar. But let us know what you guys think. It's 25 feet in between each beam. It'll be connected at the top between each one. We might connect it to the middle post. So if that is all connected, is that enough to support all of the beams? They'll be concreted in, but is that enough for you engineering out guys out there? Is that enough to support all of this along with the netting on top, the netting on the sides to keep it all stable over time? We'd love to hear it. Anything else that needs to go in here, let us know in the comments or things you wanna see change because this is what we're gonna start running with as soon as we get to building this. Let's get started on our aviary. We'll see you next time, guys. Sometimes I just don't know what to do It should have been